Hey, what is up everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy. And in this video, we're going to work our way through the session keyboard player in Logic Pro 11. And I'll also show you how to start building out musical arrangements using the session bass player and keyboard players. Before we get started, I need to quickly tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Boombox. Boombox is a fresh new approach to file storage, sharing, and collaboration for music industry professionals and hobbyists. If you're a musician, band, artist, producer, or mix engineer, you will love Boombox because it allows you to upload your files, stems, mix bounces, and even full DAW sessions. You can invite collaborators to your project who can then leave timestamped feedback on your tracks. Furthermore, Boombox offers a complete suite of collaborative tools. This includes Boombot AI, a virtual co-writer equipped with AI capabilities such as stem extraction, vocal isolation, and MIDI idea generation. Create personalized artist pages with your own branding, all from their web app or one of their mobile apps. Check out boombox.io today to sign up and get four gigabytes of free storage or upgrade to one of their premium plans for expanded storage space and additional pro-grade features. So in the last video, we jumped into the bass player. We built out a bass line uh, for all of our sections here in our song. And at bar 17, I want to kind of move over to like a chorus type section. So I need to create a new chord progression here. So to start, just to kind of use this as a guide, I'm going to press Option Command N, and we're going to create a new keyboard player. Now, the keyboard player is a little different than the bass player and drummer in that the style you choose isn't going to change the instrument that much. The freely and arpeggiated styles default to the concert grand piano patch in the new studio piano instrument in Logic 11. The broken chords and block chord styles default to the upright piano patch, and the simple pad style defaults to retro synth. But the point I'm trying to make here is that the session keyboard player MIDI that is generated does not have a lot of unique articulation styles and key switches. So when using the session bass player, you're not really going to be able to use the MIDI it generates for any bass instrument. It'll require a lot of manual editing to make all that work and setting up your articulation styles and making sure that the key switches are on the right place. It really just isn't worth it to try using a third party bass instrument there. But with the session keyboard players, you can swap out the instrument for really anything, as long as it's a polyphonic keyboard or synthesizer instrument, which makes the session keyboard player a super helpful tool for building out song arrangements and building chord progressions. Let's start by going with block chords, and I'm not going to open up a default progression here. And let's pull that keyboard player over here. And right now, the only chord in the chord track is E minor seven. So everything's gonna play E minor seven. Super boring. So let's create something more interesting here with the chord track and the chord rhythm. So let's add in a new chord progression. I'm gonna start with A minor seven, tab over, we're gonna add a G. We're gonna add an F major seven. And I have a very specific rhythm I want here. Right here, so the end of two, or the end of three rather, is where I want this G chord to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and just drag that over. And again, you have to make sure to set your snap mode up here. There we go. And then I want the F major to go right there. And then I wanna take the same chord progression and I wanna hold option and drag it over here at bar 19 to repeat it. Let's take this G chord, let's move it here. I'm actually option clicking on it to duplicate it. And let's change out this G chord to E minor seven, just to change it up a little bit. Let's try out a different preset for the bass. Okay, so let's take this same progression here, hold shift to select multiple chords, hold option, drag that over. This time let's do A minor seven, let's do C over G here, 
whoops, C slash G. There we go. That basically just means it's a C major triad with a G in the bass. It's a second inversion uh, C major triad. We'll stick with F major seven. Let's pull out the G chord here. And one of the things that's kind of tricky is if that menu is up, you can't delete it. So you got to go back and reselect it. And then for our last progression here, again, double click, hold shift, hold option to duplicate. And let's make this G. Let's make this D minor seven. Let's make this E minor seven. And then I want another G right here. So there's our whole chord progression for the whole chorus. Let's try out a different preset for the piano here. Let's make the drummer, yeah, let's make the drummer follow the chord rhythm. Let's make the bass follow the chord rhythm, but also follow the drums. Uh, so we'll go to Portland. And then we'll also make the keyboard player follow the chord rhythm, but we'll also make the keyboard player follow the bass. Let's maybe pull down the complexity as well. And one of the things I find incredibly helpful about the session keyboard player is you can adjust the left and right hand placement. So if you want more of like a closed position where hands are together, you can do that. If you want more bottom end, more in the low range, you can do something like that. Or maybe you want the right hand up in the top range of the piano, maybe even the left hand up in the top range of the piano. The other thing too is you can individually pull in or pull out the left or right hands. So let's say over in the intro here where there wasn't much going on, maybe I wanted to create a session player region there. Let's make that four bars in length and let's pull out the left hand. Let's put it in the upper range. Pull down the intensity and complexity. So I'm not really digging the block chords here. So let's try something different. Let's swap this out for the Freely style. Much better. So the Freely option is not gonna be stuck to just one playing style. It's gonna follow, you know, whatever whatever you tell it to follow, or you can choose one of the uh, patterns here. Now, the other thing you can do, in addition to turning on and off the left and right hand, in addition to adjusting the register, or the range of the left and right hand, you can also adjust the voicing style and movement. So for the left hand, you can play just the root, the root and octave, root and fifth, or root fifth and octave. Generally in my left hand, when I play piano, I like to have octaves in my left hand, so I'll do that. And there's different styles. Uh, you can have sustain only, where it just only plays the rhythm of the chord track. You can have it simple, moderate, complex. You can have it follow the right hand, or you can do steady eighth notes. So if you do something that's more complex, you're gonna make that left hand um, bass line even more complex.
Now, for the voicing for the right hand, it's a little different than the left hand. You can choose different two voice, three voice, full chord, or four plus voice chords, especially if you're using more extended harmonies like nines and elevens and thirteens and things like that. Let's try out the four the four plus voice. And the movement controls the sort of voice leading of the right hand. Do you want minimal movement in the right hand, which is probably going to end up using more inverted chords to smooth out the voice leading? Or are you okay with larger leaps and jumps? Generally speaking, I like to keep this on minimal or small because it just gives you more, you know, some more smooth voice leading. And once again, you can add fills, adjust the fill complexity, add swing if you like as well. Under details, it's just grace notes. Grace notes are a little like, almost like a flam, but for piano where you do something like, that's a grace note. So that's gonna add more of those. You just gotta be careful not to overdo it because um, it can start making things sound like they're out of key. So I generally just use a little bit. Once again, you can adjust the feel to be pull or push. You can make more or less out of the dynamics if you like. You can humanize it and you can adjust the tempo. And like with the other session players, you can also enter in a manual pattern for the keyboard to follow if you prefer. And if you go into the studio piano instrument, you'll see that there are four different uh, pianos here. These are brand new sampled pianos. So you have a studio grand. And each one of these has different options you can play around with, different miking options. You've got a concert grand, very simple controls here. Vintage upright. And then you have studio grand, one mic. Kind of like the Studio Grand with these other two mics pulled in here. And once again, if you want to fully customize your session player parts, you can right click or control click, go down to convert, and you can convert these to MIDI regions, and you can open this up and you can play around uh, with these parts. Now, I'm not a huge fan of this. I think. Maybe there's too much going on in the right hand. I mean, there's like some five note chords going on here. So instead of doing uh, that four plus voice, let's do, um, yeah, let's do full chord um, to kind of keep those chords a little less complex. So I, I want this to sound like a real player can play it, not something that's impossible for a real person to play. Cool. So that is the session keyboard player. In the next video, we're going to continue on with the session keyboard player. I'm going to show you how to swap out the instrument for other third party instruments or other logic instruments. And we'll explore some of the other uh, keyboard player playing styles. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.